too much of a good thing. It can become almost commonplace when it comes to engagement with felines, and while what is called the zoomies, or overstimulation, occurs often during innocent playtime, some cats can find that breaking point during a petting session, where the love and the affection becomes unpleasant, and the cat starts rather quickly to rebel. In this material, we'll talk about why cats get overstimulated during petting sessions, the warning signs that something negative is about to happen, and how you, as an owner, can navigate this rather rough terrain. Interesting topic, important topic, and I've got you covered. Stay tuned. I'll first start off by saying that overstimulation, it is indeed normal. Now, while that's not to say that it should take place during every petting session, it's going to happen from time to time, especially if your cat is naturally very active, very curious, and doesn't really enjoy giving up that all-important control. Most cats, especially felines that do enjoy their environment and enjoy the loving company of their owners, love to be petted. Cuddle time and comfort time, it's fun and relaxing. However, cats seem to have an internal clock, just like they do with most anything. And once that buzzer sounds and that final shot is taken, it's time to move on to the next thing. And while petting can lead to honest physical discomfort, depending on your cat's overall standing of health, many times overstimulation is simply the result of having too much of a good thing too fast. Too much excitement. If you are petting your cat, especially petting them on your sofa, there's not much room, at least not enough room for your cat to truly act up and act out to physically do something with the stimulation they've been receiving. When a cat is on the receiving end of affection, this will naturally increase that stimulation meter. And cats in many ways are like children. They have to have a place to release all of that energy. Once that meter is pegged, a bit of fight or flight kicks in. Cats often begin looking for an escape route when overstimulation does kick in and they feel physically boxed in. For example, if your cat is resting on your lap and you're hands-on, just petting away, your cat doesn't have too much wiggle room. And when those zoomies do strike, your pet will find it difficult to get away. And this, unfortunately, this is where the trouble comes in. Similar to overstimulation during a play session, your sweet and cuddly cat could begin to hiss, bite, claw, kick you with those back legs, all in a measure to get away from the stimulant and begin to release that energy. And let's not forget control. I mentioned it in passing. Cats are more than willing to concede control, especially to people they know and trust. But if the bulk of that time spent with you is you being hands-on and calling all of the shots, something will inevitably have to give. Too much stimulation, no real way to release it, and the feeling of being out of control. That can be a bad trio. This is why happy cats can turn sour within seconds once overstimulation truly sets in. Young people and the elderly, overstimulation is more than just an inconvenience, and the signal that cuddle time is over. Depending on the person on the receiving end of all of this, overstimulation could result in someone unfortunately getting hurt. Most of the time before the biting and the clawing, cats will give a few non-aggressive hints. These are key, and they're very important to recognize. Your pet, well, they're giving you some cues, and this is your window to stop petting to end the cuddles. First up, pay attention to those ears and the eyes. If your cat's ears fall back, almost like they're pinned back, and those pupils get wide, stop petting immediately, gently and slowly. Remove your hands from your cat's body. This will place you in a safe spot, and it will turn full control of things back over to your cat. This way, your pet can exit, jump off that sofa, for example, on their time. They won't have to fight with you in order to be released. And speaking, unfortunately, of fighting, no. Never attempt to match fire with fire. Should your cat go into full angry attack mode in an effort to get down and get away from you, never attempt to gain control and flex some of your own muscle. All this will do is send your cat's senses through the roof. And if you thought a petting session caused overstimulation, attempting to teach your cat a lesson in that moment, you'll likely get far more than you ever bargained for. Don't take out your personal frustration and anger on your pet. That's just asking for a full-blown mess. Now... Continuing on with those non-aggressive cues, watch for the tail. If your cat's tail suddenly starts to swing back and forth, that's another warning sign. 
And while you're petting your pet, be mindful of your cat's posture. How they feel if all of a sudden your cat starts to tighten up. This means that relaxation time is no longer the vibe. Your cat is tense, and that's a red flag. Those signals, those warning signs, are typically what you'll see and feel prior to a full-on reaction to being overstimulated. So, before those claws start to swipe and those teeth attempt to bite, be mindful of those all-important cues. Once you recognize a cue, just one, release your cat, let them go. Let them move away from you and just call it a day on that petting session. As a cat owner, especially if the cat is uh, the cat in question that you've had them for years, time is knowledge and time is, in fact, wisdom. You'll know when your cat has had enough. Past experiences, both good and bad, can prove invaluable. Before I close things out today, I'd like to spend a moment on the topic of personality. We've talked about the why with respect to overstimulation, but that threshold, that breaking point, most all cats have one, but it varies depending on personality. Some cats are more independent than others, more active than others, more aggressive. And while this isn't to say that a cat of this description doesn't love those pets and the cuddles, but the enjoyment could have a very short shelf life. And as soon as control is relinquished, and a few minutes of petting is enjoyed, that cat in question, they'll likely want it all back. They'll want to be in charge again. They'll want to be in control of their own stimulation. And those cuddles that they did in fact want, they now want you to stop giving <laughs> giving them out to them. I currently have three cats, and two of which I could probably pet and cuddle with them for an hour or more. And outside of them getting a bit squirmy in my lap, no major form of overstimulation will take place because of, mainly because of their personality. It's not, uh, there's nothing that really leaves them looking for another outlet. They're naturally calm and content, and it takes more, a lot more, to peg that stimulation meter. The other cat, he's about an 8 out of 10, all the time, anytime. He's more active, more curious, more aggressive. He's certainly loving and sweet, but make no mistake, he's got to be in control. And when he hits that overstimulation line, if you even touch his back, when he's not looking, he might turn around and whip that head around and try to claw you. In petting sessions, he loves them. Loves them to death, but only for so long. You've got about two or three minutes to put him down, to take him out of your lab because he, before he becomes the, the enemy and you're the enemy in his eyes. I think about this topic and I think about people. Other folks have a short fuse. Some people have longer fuses, uh, especially in certain environments, like a hectic work environment with people talking and phones ringing constantly. Some folks are just as cool as a cucumber in that setting, in that environment. Other people, if they've got more than just two or three things going on at once, then they're bouncing off the walls. That is too much for them to handle. And why, uh, while neither is wrong, it's just some people deal with things better than others. It's the same is true with cats. Every feline has a point where overstimulation does occur, but the fuses, they can certainly be longer than others, just like people. As a bit of a side note, sometimes overstimulation can be the result of a lack of stimulation throughout the course of a single day, a week, or month, meaning... The cat could be going bonkers because they're not used to being stimulated at all. That five-minute petting session could be too much because they're not used to being engaged in that manner on any level. Solution? Daily involvement. Play sessions, meals. Just a simple pat on the head as you walk by. Make everything fun. Make, like I said, meals. Make mealtime fun. Build up that tolerance for engagement. And if lack of stimulation is the cause of overstimulation... That fuse, that time period of acceptance and tolerance will naturally increase because stimulation of some sort, will be the normal way of life and not some random, unexpected event. To the audience of Senior Cat Wellness, anything you'd like to add and share, anything that you would uh, like to add to this conversation with respect to this topic, that comment section, as always, it's all yours. And if you enjoy this content, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd certainly love to have you as a member of the Senior Cat Wellness family. And until next time, thank you so very much for watching, and I will talk to you later.